All right, well, it's been a couple of days. Uh, yesterday was a complete rain out. Um, but yeah, we're getting back on these and we're gonna do our best to try to show you exactly how to do the springs, how to hook the, put the shoes back on, and uh, how to do this job from start to finish. It's the same on both sides. Uh, and I got a couple of things I wanna show you in here where I talked about how they had done some stuff wrong on the other side. They did some minor things wrong on this side too. So let's, uh, let's get going and I'll show you what, I'm, what I found. Okay, we're zoomed in really tight here because I wanted to show you this. This is what was done wrong on this side. And like I said, it's not that big a deal. The brakes are gonna still work. It's just, they're not put back together as they were designed. Um, I believe the springs are because everything's lined up like it's supposed to be. But if you look right here, look really close, you see that, that uh, C-clip that you bend, that we, I showed you about bending on the other side. Well, if you look real close, they put the spring washer, it's flat, it's called a flat spring washer, it's actually supposed to be between the back, the arm that's on the back and the brake shoe itself. It's supposed to go on first, then slide it through, then pinch that around. So yeah, somebody's been in here before. They got them mostly back together. They were working, I mean, so at some point. So, you know, but uh, yeah, but tear them down one side at a time and uh, that way you don't get confused. So. Let's get going. We're gonna start tearing this thing down. Probably one of the hardest things I can do here is get and keep a camera angle where everybody can see what I'm doing and what's going on and uh, me actually being able to work at the same time. So let's go ahead and start hitting this with some, some of this stuff, knocking some of the funk off. A little brake clean. I don't think I grabbed another can, so I'll have to get up and go find another can. That's okay. All right, let me grab the can of brake clean. Yeah, we ain't got to get too carried away. I'm just going to get the big, knock the big chunks off and kind of make sure it's not a lot of dust because you really don't want to breathe any dust. You know, while a lot of this stuff has been, asbestos has been removed from modern stuff, you're dealing with old stuff. You might come across stuff that's got asbestos in it. So it's good to not make a lot of dust. Just wet it down. Try to eliminate a bunch of it if you can. So that's all we're going to do for that right now. Um, one of the things I should have done the other day, and I, until I started really thinking about it, um, is that clip that you have to spread. Um, you can go ahead and spread that clip and get that thing open before you unmount everything because it, it'll kind of hold it in position a little better. It won't be moving around as much and you can, should be able to spread it. Maybe not as easy as I thought, but at least it's not jumping around. Let's see if I can get it to come apart. Come on. need to spread just a little bit so I can get the screwdriver in there. Start twisting like that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there it is. You can just get more aggressive with it and it's not going to move around or go anywhere as easily. I mean, Putting it on there, it's not that big a deal, but getting it off is. And there is that, let's take it out of there so you can see. If you couldn't see it before, there's that flat spring washer right there. And, you, know, there. you can see it right there. That actually goes in behind that arm, but you get a new one in the hardware kit. All right, so let's get to tearing them down. My favorite spring tool right here is this little dude right here. Is get it started in behind the spring. Whoop, oh, have to actually push in. There we go, and turn and twist. Man, these, the, having the right stuff, man, makes the job so much easier. 
gives them a hundred spring and twist. Boom, and there it goes. All right, that piece, cable holder. Keep everything together as it comes off. Just lay it in a nice safe place. Put it up here on your leaf spring, since this is a good spot for this. On this truck, there's a nice little part shelf right up there for you on your leaf spring. All right, now let's get these cup springs. Come on, come on. There we go. over and it will be able to come undone just like that and I think now that I paid real close attention to how I took that off I might actually be able to put it back on the same way so lay that down lay that down and the bottom spring now this spring I'll let you look and see here you see these two springs the ends are different and are made different. This is what they had mixed up on the other side. This is the this is the bottom spring and it's got a longer hook on it and it angles it and positions it a little different and it has a longer piece here than this spring. If you can see the difference in the two. Somehow they had mixed them up. They made it work, but man, don't ask me how. I wasn't making it work. Let's see, is this adjuster frozen? Nope. Nice and free. So, we get this adjuster cleaned up. It's not seized. Let's take, let's put a little brake clean down inside and then let it hydraulically. You can run it back down again. Just work to get the fuzz off. They ain't got to be perfect. These uh, brakes run in a really nasty environment and work perfect for years. So don't get too carried away. You just want to clean the big chunks off. I'll lay this adjuster to the side for now. All right. See, here's another thing. The, uh, this park brake piece, there's a piece missing that somebody either left off or lost or did they did what they did something. There's supposed to be a plate that goes on here and kind of helps add a little more tension to that spring. Again, it will work fine without it. When it's, you know, this that's not a piece that comes in the hardware kits. It's a uh, something you're supposed to actually keep up with, and they didn't. So let's go ahead and roll this out. Park brake arm. Now, let's find the wire brush right here. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We'll go ahead and change this wheel cylinder because uh, when we went to try to think we were gonna reuse these wheel cylinders, they are completely and corroded and terrible. So I ended up having to buy some the other day. Um, Advance had them in town, so. Get this brake line to come loose. And it's not wanting to. Not good. 
I don't think I have a 7 16 brake line here at home. Let's uh, get another bite and try again. Oh boy. Get a little brake clean. And uh, I need to find a small hammer and a chisel so I can vibrate it. Yeah, WD-40 is not my favorite lubricant in the world, but it's kind of what I got at the moment. So let me bring you around here and let you see what I'm working with here. I'm trying to get this loose right here. So I need to try to be careful because this line is pretty tender. If I have to make another line, it's not very long. It only goes to right there and it's not going to be that big a deal, but object is to not destroy that line. trick here is don't get carried away vibrate it you're not trying to chisel it off oh and there it goes you're just trying to vibrate it and let's see if it's going to turn inside this yeah the line is seized so let's see if we can get it to turn and get the line to turn we're going to have to carefully bend it and take the whole thing off and get it loose outside here. Yep, we'll have to get it loose. Yep, she's the line's kind of kind of seized to it. Okay, there it is. We got it off. We just pulled the whole line. We we're kind of tender with it. Like I said, it's not a real long line. Um, this end spins, and uh, this end does not. So we're gonna have to take it in here and see if we can carefully get it freed up. I don't have to make another line. All right, so we've tried tapping on it and uh, see if we can get it to focus. It doesn't really want to focus on this. All right, here we go. So I went and got my little map gap gas torch. Turn it on. It's kind of windy, so I may end up moving inside. We're gonna heat it up. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot down here where I'm trying to hold it. I do, I'll just have to get some gloves on. All right, now. Bring you around here. I've got another hammer laying right there, good hammer big head and I can take and I'm tapping gently on the flats I see crust and crud falling out of it but you want to tap on the flats uh, let's see there we go no problem we'll take spray a little lube on it it's gonna be gonna steam up a little bit that's okay. That's okay. Let it steam. But look at that. Nice and free. My life's a lot easier now. I'm going to let this cool off before I forget how hot it is and accidentally touch it. 
All right, so now that we've got that taken care of, we can get so a couple of these tools to the side so I can get in here. We can uh, take this wheel cylinder off and it is a couple of half inch bolts that come in from back and go into it right here. Pretty simple, um, not rocket science with this. Keep an eye out for wasps. They were trying to make a home here the other day. Rust is real with this one. Fortunately, so far, everything has kind of come apart. Um, I'm really surprised. All right. I'm gonna save these pins. There. Just a little sticky. Now, this is why we're replacing the wheel cylinders. These, I don't even think, are rebuildable cores. These are so bad. The aluminum plungers inside here have corroded and expanded and are absolutely ruined. So, kind of like my glove. Can of brake clean. I'm going to finish emptying this can. Pretty much done. Wet everything down. Try to catch it on my towel, if at all possible. Keep it off my driveway. Again, guys, this is brake dust. Try not to make dust with it. I'm making mud with mine. We're just trying to get the big chunks off. Not, not doing a restoration here. Just uh, trying to make sure it's clean so that they function properly. Alright, I don't want to do it. Hit it with a wire brush and hit it with a one more one more hose down. Get the big chunks knocked off. Get up underneath. Okay, we'll let that dry. And that's gonna have to be good enough for now. Okay, so we're ready to start reassembling some of the pieces. We've got the part brake arm, which this end down here attaches to the cable and with the spring on it down on this end. Uh, you take your shoe, this one happens to be the rear shoe, the longest, longest brake material, which is on the back. You put the little spring on and you install the arm through the hole. And then you take your little clip and you get it started in there. Let's see if I can, yep, tap it down in there with a hammer, get it seated. Oh, uh, where are my channel locks? There they are. Let's see if we can squeeze it with the channel locks. Man, let's just go with the needle nose. I think I can do it with the needle nose. Well, or not. All the way seated. Let's give it another shot. There we go. There we go. You just want to close it up so that the little clip cannot come out and you got it caught in the groove. There you go. Set that to the side. You want to hang this on your new shoe. And we will take and install our new wheel cylinder. Now, when I was putting, my son was putting these wheel cylinders in, he was not aware and nor was I until I came and looked at it. He had trouble getting it on this old Ford, getting it back up in there because of the way this bracket is designed and come around. He couldn't see inside here, but the aluminum plungers were all the way at the end of their travel and sticking out just a little bit, so they didn't want to quite fit. You just have to push the pistons back up inside the cylinder just a little bit, and then you can get them on.
We can get our bolt started. Tightened up. Alright. Pull the plug out of the back of it. We're going to get our brake line started. And we're going to have to probably bend and tweak it a little bit because it's taking it off. It changed the angle on it just a little bit, ever so slightly. But it's not a big deal. Where did we lay our 7 16 wrench? It's gotta be out here amongst this stuff somewhere, right? We just used it, there it is. Cleverly disguised as a 7 16 wrench. Sure glad I was able to get this line freed up. Get it aimed back in the right spot. We can work with that somewhat. Truck really needs all new brake lines for uh, maximum brake reliability. But as long as you keep an eye on these, you know, they should be fine for a while. Okay, next, what I think I need to do, and I hope I'm right, we will see. It's not a big deal if I have to undo it. There's nothing. Here's the thing. If you have to undo something once, you know, it's not a big deal. Sometimes you have to take a step forward and then take a step back and change the way you're looking at something. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to get this spring set up so I can grab it. Let's see. This shoe started. Come on. Why is it? I don't want to go on that plunger. There we go. Not that it really matters because it's probably going to fall back off of it again when I mess with it. But take my tool. Spring. And we're going to capture this one and hold it in place right there. <coughs> All right, now we're going to take this other shoe and we're going to take this little spring right here. It was such a pain in the rear end before and go ahead and get it installed and we didn't have not prepped our self-adjuster wheel yet so we need to do that and Annie sees like I showed you on the other side just put it on the end of the threads and then take this, and if you'll notice on this side, it has normal threads. They're not backwards like the other side. Run it down, and then it will be all over your threads throughout, and you don't have a bunch of mess. It's a little mess. And you just want to put a little dollop on this pivot point. And you don't want to get carried away because you don't want to get grease and oil on your brake shoes. All right, so which way does it go? That way or that way? It goes that way. All right. 
All right, we had to do a little tidying up here and uh, kind of straighten the butt, straightening up the area. I'm going to get down here and lay down beside it. And try not to block your view. So if you're trying to learn how to do this, that you can actually see how to do it on these. Some of these type springs like this, you have to actually take a pair of pliers, push them back and clamp on to hold the spring back because the spring is so tight. But on this one, I have found that it is not nearly that strong and I can just pull it back by hand and go and capture the cable in it, and turn it and then let the spring go and it'll hold it. Just lay that down for just a minute. I need to get the self adjuster bar and the adjuster wheel and try not to lose any of my pieces. Let's see, here we go. All right, this spring needs to turn around with the hook on this end facing toward the inside of the truck. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky. So we're gonna put that piece on there, slide the shoe up, get the Bring on like that, and then we're gonna see if we can put the self adjuster wheel in, so in there. All right, get it started there, and lift it up, get it started in there, and boom, that is it. I think I have hit upon the sequence. Hey, you wanna hang on to this, you don't wanna let it go because it'll all fall apart again and that's not what you really need and i will work on showing you how to get all this stuff put back on here right now i need to get the anchor pin put back in place to hold the shoe where it belongs so just bear with me while i do that slide that pin in from back it sticks out the front. You learn how to do things one-handed a lot of times. I'm setting up these springs. Set that spring up, put the cup on top of it, switch hand, grab tool, and you can catch the cup like that. One finger. It takes a little practice, but you can do it. Put it on, twist, turn, lock it in place. Here we go. All right, now, we've got it, the pins are in place. We've got to do the cable. We've got to install the park brake bar, which is not a problem because there still should be enough room to shuffle this stuff around just a little bit, enough to get it on here. Slide that out and that in. There we go. There we go, get them up where they belong. Come on, there we go. All right, so now let's start with the, you got a spring here and a spring over here and they have to be stretched into place. This one we can, I think we can, oh, wrong hole. Ain't no way that spring gonna stretch that far. This spring goes here, okay. This piece goes on first. And then this goes on. And it comes around this way and attaches down there. I'll show you about that in a minute. Let's get this first spring on and get this attached behind it. Brake tool spring. Brake spring tool. All right. It popped in there. All right, got that first one on. 
sure that your spring is as back as far as it can go. And that everything is kind of seated in place. Okay. Make sure your self adjuster hadn't moved like mine just did. Let's get my new spring. Come on. There it goes. Reinstall the new spring in this. This is a pivot point for your cable. And you've got two different holes to choose from. I believe it's going to be that bigger hole right there. Come on should just pop right in. We know how all that should. Sometimes things don't always go as they expect them to. There we go. And that is supposed to fit up in the hole. There it goes. Have I got that spring backwards? I don't think so. Something's not right. Let's take a look. Get that piece out of that hole. That spring should come from underneath, I believe. Just like that. Are we gonna be able to pivot it around? pivots around but it doesn't want to sit like it's supposed to there it went I heard it click all right Let's see if we're gonna be able to get this like I want it may have to pry on it with a screwdriver you can get under the self adjuster and lift up on the arm and attach the cable try not to stab yourself Get that wedged over and trapped. Come on. And grab some pliers to give me a little more reach up in there. There it is. And we have it trapped. Now, I can take and attach this spring. Well, that's the first time the spring ever give them. This spring tool is giving me as much trouble. There it is. Nothing to it. Now, we can put some tension on this self adjuster so that cable's got a little tension on it. None of these parts fall apart. Make sure everything is kind of centered. Shuck it around a little bit. And there it is. I hope it made sense. I tried to make sense of it as I went, and it's still really difficult to show everything that I do. But that will give you a basic idea. Do it one side at a time take pictures as you go and you should be able to get your drums drum brakes done now what we need to do is we need to do the pre-adjustment so that the drum barely slips over these drums got a little rust on them the other day when it rained not a big deal um, 
I'll just take and hit them with a little light sandpaper and then we'll uh, adjust these out. And I'll show you how to do that real quick too. All right, there you go. You ain't got to be perfect. It just needs to knock the big stuff off. There we go. A little rust. There we go. Got most of it knocked off. You can see where they were kind of rusted before from sitting. But that's okay. We got it. Now, as far as adjusting these, all right, you see that adjuster wheel? It's just free enough. You're clicking, you can turn it by hand. And it's a matter of turning it out and doing a little trial, turning it out, doing a little trial, turning it out, doing a little trial. See how your drum fits. Okay, that didn't we got there. We got there rather quick. There it went. Alright guys, what you may not know or need to understand is when you're doing drum brakes, drag that much is really what's needed when you first start doing your first initial uh, break in and setting on your brake drums. Because if you don't, they'll be too loose and you'll have too much pedal stroke. So now we're going to pick up a few tools and uh, see about getting this brake line put on. Okie dokie, karaoke. We crawled up under here and no, I have a jack sitting here. It is not, it is not supporting the vehicle. The vehicle is on the jack stands. Okay, flush these brake lines off camera so there's not anything in them. Um, I told you this line was slightly, had to, you remember when we had trouble and I, it's slightly bent. Just a little bit trying to get it off. So I think what I'm going to do, all right, is Figure out where this needs to be. Yes, it needs to go in there like that. Now, I'm going to actually start the line into the block first. Come on. If it will, if it will thread up in there. There we go. That way I've got a little maneuverability and I can move and bend this and it still be lined up, if you understand what I mean. It's easier to start the line in this block with the line out here and then maneuver it into where it needs to be than it is to put this where it needs to be and then try to maneuver the line to it. Let's see, it needs to come this way just a little bit. And let's see if we can get this started. Is it going? Did it go? It did not. It's okay. We'll get it. Let's see. I think it started. It's just wanting to be a little difficult because of some mild rust in the threads. 
Oh yeah, she's a good one, no problem. All right, now, while it's still able to be moved around a little bit, this piece right here, whoop, sorry, this piece right here is the crank, crank case, is the differential vent, and it's actually what holds this in place. And I can move this whole assembly over and get it back started. Come on. And get where I can see. There we go. There it is. But the vent, the threaded vent piece holds the brake line in place. And then the brake line goes up here. Did I just put that piece on backwards? Oh my God. Womp, womp, womp. It's not a big deal. It's called thinking. You have to do it. Let me loosen this. And rotate it over. Not a big deal. Womp, womp. Fail. What a doofus. Now, get the threads lined up. There we go. Do this stuff every day. Still make an occasional mistake. It happens. I believe this was a 5 8 but I could be wrong. I am wrong. 9 16 We'll get this block snug down and then we'll uh, tighten up our brick line. And that is a 7 16 And we'll make sure that our brake line is not rubbing anywhere that it's not supposed to be. Let's go ahead and snug it down. and in place and now I've got to crawl out from under here and I'm going to try to get you a camera angle and I may just end up having to do it after I do the repair and explain it to you then but I got to crawl out to get apart okay so we're back um I have to get this brake line started and it's up here where you really can't see where I'm working too well Try to get it started. Uh, getting it loose is one thing. Getting it back started is gonna be another. Let's see if I can fit it, my fat tail up in here. Here we go, come on. Oh, oh perfect. And get it slid up in there. Now. This is what I had to crawl out for. They have these little line clips that actually hold that brake line secure to the chassis. And that's it right there. And uh, the ones on this truck broke the other day when I was taking it off. And uh, You just take and slide it on there. You may have to have a little hammer or something to go on and seat it. So that's what we're gonna grab. Let's see if I can just gently tap it in place. These are not good factory pieces, so they're not it's going to bend a little bit. Take your time, it's, it's got it, it's holding it. All right, now I should be able to get my wrench, wrenches 
on it, you have to hold the body of the line with a 5 8 and put a 7 16 wrench on the line. Or is it, nope, this is the one that made me want to pull my hair out. It was a 3 8. I'm like, really? And that seems secure. Clipped in place. Let me bring the camera up under here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, right there is where I'm working. And what I did was, is I actually, to get the line started, is you take this metal line here and you kind of push it through the hole, thread the fitting into the brake line, put it back through the hole, this is large and it just barely fits the hole then you put your clip in it then you take your wrench hold here with one wrench tighten here with the other wrench and there you go well there is not a real good way to get you a good angle here just because of the way the truck's made i've got a large ac line that's directly in my way so, my son installed the master cylinder the other day and went ahead and filled it up with brake fluid and he let it gravity bleed. Normally I suggest that you bench bleed these. Oh, uh, I'm gonna lock this lid on so I won't be messing, knocking it off. That'll be good enough for now. Just keep me from knocking it off. But I just tighten these up to keep the brake fluid from just running out on the ground because just leaking brake fluid everywhere. Let's see if we can get these started. It's already started dripping, so I don't want to lose all my brake fluid. And it is a 7 16 Hold the line kind of in a vertical position where it's a neutral not rubbing on anything got that snugged up now let's get back here get this one undone let's see if we can get it started i'm doing this blind of course Strictly braille, because I cannot see it. I'm going to change the game here because I can't see what I'm doing. Alright, let's get the line shoved up in there where it goes. There it goes. I think I'm getting close. Ah, yes. I got it. Sometimes you have to learn to work by braille. And this one is, I had it laying here, there it is, a 5 8 Try to hold the line, get it positioned where I want it, it's not in the way of the steering column. And a spark plug wire touching it, but it'll be okay. But it is clear of the steering column and doesn't appear to be rubbing on the clutch linkage or anything like that. So, Okay, now all the lines are hooked back up. I think everything's tight. So the first thing you got to do, which I've already done, is make sure the master cylinder is full of brake fluid. If you have an assistant, this will go a lot easier. My assistant is on her way to help you and get somebody to mash the brake pedal to bleed the brakes. We're going to start with the right rear wheel. And I'd just like to say thank you, China, for making these wheel cylinders 10 millimeter. Okay, make sure it's free. All right, assistant, go ahead, start pumping.
All right, press it to the floor and hold. Let me know when you have it. It's there. So all you have to say is holding. Holding. Oh, got a little, a little squirt of air, perfect. Pump about 10 strokes and then let me know when you're holding. All right, one more. One more? No, one more time, sorry. One more round of 10? Yes, please. Holding. Keep going, do it again. We're still getting air. Thank you. Again, if you need to switch legs, you can. Man, it's wearing my leg out. Holding. Again. Holding. Okay, I think this side is good. Now we need to do you can let go. All right. I believe this side is good. We need to go up here and check the brake fluid. I have bled a bunch out of that side. We're gonna go ahead and check the mass cylinder. And we just about screwed up. I don't think it started sucking air yet, but something has me. What has me? Yeah, we were really close to running out of brake fluid. So, make sure you keep your brake fluid topped off or you'll have to start over. Nobody wants that. All right, brake fluid is topped off. Now we move over to the left rear and it should not take as much for this side because we should have most of the air purged or all the air purged from the front to the back. All right, assistant, go ahead and begin pumping. After 10 strokes, you can hold. Okay, got a little bit of air. All right, do it again. And one more time, and I think we'll be done with these. Saw so no air that time. I think we're good on these. Now we are up to the front right side. All right, assistant, go ahead and begin pumping. Continue to hold, do not let up. All right, pump. Holding. All right. 
front pump. Solid brake fluid. We're good on that one. All right, let's check the brake fluid and make sure it's okay. It's a little low. And what you have to keep in mind and remember, the front side on the mass cylinder is for the rear brakes. The rear side with the larger reservoir is for the front disc. since everything is new and, just, and been replaced you can feel the brake fluid all the way to the top whoa come on there we go all right and last but not least we're on to the left front. Assistant, go ahead, do your thing. Holding. All right, go ahead and pump. I think we've got, already got most of the air out. I believe that's it. Thank you, Miss Assistant. Okay, so there you go. When you're bleeding your brakes, it's very simple. And this is the way it always is with almost any vehicle that you do. You start at the furthest point away. It's just the passenger rear, then you move to the driver rear, then you move to the passenger front, and then you move to the driver front. Always remember that. So we replaced almost all the rubber lines on the truck. Has new calipers, has new wheel cylinders, has new rear shoes, new pads in the front, new brake fluid, new mash cylinder. So now all we gotta do is clean up around the truck, get it picked back up, put back on its four, put its four shoes back on and try to drive it and see how the brakes do. So we're gonna hop to that. guys the uh, road test eh, well I wouldn't so much call it a road test we kind of ran it around in my field uh, just because of the way it's running right now the uh, the carburetor probably needs an accelerator pump probably needs to be gone through and cleaned out new fuel filter and all such as that uh, it just doesn't want to run right so I don't want to take it out on the road and try to test the brakes out that way I do have a good pedal I have a firm pedal it doesn't sink it uh first stroke is a little softer than i like and i have to when as soon as i hit it again it comes right to the top so what that's telling me is uh i probably need to adjust the rear drums up just a little bit more make them just a little snug more snug and uh if that doesn't do it then we'll go back through and uh, check to make sure that we have purged all the air it's possible that you got a bubble or two left of air and that can cause a, a soft pedal so until we can get that carburetor fixed and do a video about that, if possible, why don't you go out and watch another video coming on the screen right now?